Hello everyone. Welcome you all. This is the introduction video for ASME Section 8, Division 2. To learn more about this program, register with the link in the description. Now welcome you all. Hope uh, the objective is pretty clear that why we are here. Okay. Uh, we are here to see or uh, to learn about the new course which is Division 2 which we are going to start. So it's a very uh, new course, but uh, definitely Division 2 is uh, seeming like a future you know, for next few years. So definitely for the guys who are good in Division 1, the next stop is to learn Division 2 also. Okay. So let me share my screen. I hope uh, you all are aware of what exactly Scootoid e-learning is. See, we are Scootoid e-learning. We provide uh, training services. So till now, we have been providing uh, training in Division 1. Our course is Master Static Equipment Design and PV Lite. We also provide welded storage tank. Okay. We also do services, but that vertical is completely different. Uh, our training mode is uh, mainly e-learning mode. Uh, where we have a platform where you get login ID and password and you learn by login you know, to that platform. Uh, that is the division one mode and all other courses which we have. Now this division two course that will be live session with us. So first let us discuss what exactly is the agenda. Okay. So now, uh, you know, first, once you saw this you know, the uh, program division two, the thing you might have you know, uh, noticing that why division two, why we are going for division two. So anyone, why division two training is required? Do we need division two training? Okay, recently I uh, run a poll also in LinkedIn. Many of you might have seen that. So uh, it got lots of votes and 67% uh, of people feel that division two is going to be uh, you know, the future and that basically part four okay, not part five part four is going to be really in you know a uh, coming big way and lots of companies for any critical vessel they are preferring division two part four design okay so it's a uh, very soon it will be kind of must to know you no know, category Till now, it is good to know category. Okay, if you know that is good, but very soon it will be must to know. Okay, so why why is basically we are you no know, division two we should learn. So first one thing I have already told you that many of you know, will feel that way. So ASME is also shifting towards division two. You see UHX was moved from division one to division two. So they want to make division two part four very complete. Okay. And what is the main factor? Why basically division two part four design is beneficial. Division two is uh, not alternative rule. Actually division three is the alternative rule, which we you know, call, but division two part four is again designed by rule. It's very similar to your section eight division one design. Uh, and part five of division two is basically designed by analysis. Okay. So many times we think that division two is analysis. It's not you know, uh, completely true. Okay. So joy is saying less factor of safety helps to save. Yes. Joy, absolutely right. Allowable stresses are less. Are less or higher. Allowable stresses are higher because the factor of safety is less. What is the factor of safety on UTS in division one? 3.5. Absolutely right. And what is the factor of safety in division two, part four? Division two, part four, three. Absolutely right. Division two, part four is three. Now division two, part five, which is designed by analysis. What is the factor of safety? Karthik has only written 2.4. Okay, so you can see. You know, so that much 
directly you are saving in the thickness okay so factor of safety reduces your thickness will reduce so you'll save a lot of uh, cost in material now earlier why we used to avoid division 2 because we need to do analysis which is very costly software and you know, it takes lots of time but now division 2 part 4 it's as simple and fast as division 1 you know, even in pv light we can do that okay so that is the difference now it is uh, you know becoming easier to do division 2 so if it is easy as easy as division 1 or section 8 division 1 definitely there is going to be shift because you are gaining lots of advantage in terms of saving cost of material okay so the shift is uh, you know going towards division 2 that is you know very much true but don't be worried that division 1 knowledge will not uh, you know be usable see the uh, it the world is moving towards division 2 it's still 90% of the vessel will be designed by division 1 okay so don't worry about it okay and for learning division 2 you need division 1 okay that is the first step towards learning division 2 otherwise you will not you know, understand what exactly uh, division 2 is talking about okay so it will be really difficult so definitely it has lower factor of safety that is giving us the advantage and the design is now you know, as costly as division 1 so it's not more costlier so we are not spending much on design so it is you know, gaining lots of uh, advantage and ground in design okay so clients are preferring okay so it seems to be a very obvious next step for any design engineer who is more than five years of experience okay if you are having less than five years of experience i think you should focus still on division one completing that with you know in complete manner and then you should try to switch for division two okay so before we talk in detail about the syllabus there is a eligibility criteria for this course you know, not everybody can attend this uh, either so there are two criteria either you are five years of experience in static equipment design and you have gained lots of experience experience uh, does not i'm not counting the years only okay your knowledge should be at par of a good engineer who is working almost five years in the same industry pressure vessel design okay or you might have completed the static equipment design course and you have have some experience good hold on that okay now you have very good command and now you are ready to move to the next level okay other than that, uh, you know, it will not be meaningful because our study will be comparative. Okay, from division one, what was the basis? What formula we used? And now what we are going to use for division two? So it will be comparative study so that you also understand uh, the reason behind the change or you know how it might be effective. And it will be easy for you to remember also you know, if you study in a comparative manner. So that is what we'll be focusing on okay um now let us talk about the syllabus okay so we have called it division two part four but it does not mean that it is only limited to division part four okay it's very very detailed we'll be starting from part one okay what part one covers part one talks about the scope of division two it also covers lots of definitions so we'll go through that and then some guideline related to metric and si unit so we'll see that part two talks about responsibility and duties basically the responsibility of user who is giving you the input okay whose responsibility is to provide input there is guideline for that also so responsibility and duties uh, part two here basically the what is the responsibility of client okay so if he is giving the input that input should be complete okay there is a document called user design specification okay which has to be provided as an input okay so it will capture all the 
inputs together whatever attachments they have to put it has to be a uh, part of that uds okay so there is a complete input okay now you now think if you are getting input in a complete manner with everything written down how much easier our life will become okay so that is a requirement for division 2 okay? it has to be there then if you are preparing a report, if you are a manufacturer side preparing a report or checking the report submitted by the manufacturer, then what should be the format? What should be the content of that design report? What are the things it should be considered there? All that is given, you know, very detailed manner. So that will be seen. Then we'll uh, see part three, where We'll talk about material that part is very less that requirement of material we have covered in very depth in division one there is not further uh, addition to that some additions related to ultrasonic requirement of the plates and forging okay so that we'll talk about okay. and then we'll move to part four which is very 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 extensive all the clauses related to you know starting from design fabrication forming everything is listed here uh, even the weld category weld joint efficiencies okay so all that we are going to see here okay the design loads and load combination so if you might have uh, doing section 8 division 1 design you might have seen lots of load cases okay so how that load case is created okay? that is given here that guideline is available in division 2 so PV light is taking input from division two. Okay. Then there is a uh, different components, thickness requirement like shell, okay, cylindrical shell, conical shell, spherical shells. We'll talk about that. Uh, Tori spherical heads, all the thickness calculation of the different parts which we you know, we have done in division one. We'll do here also. Then we'll see combined loading and the allowable stress when you do the combination of loading the allowable stress also changes okay based on the type of loading okay, and type of stress created by that load so that is uh, given in a very you know, complete manner in uh, part four is a very good table which you can refer and will be able to know so we'll talk about that and we'll see that in detail then external pressure calculations you know for different parts okay then uh, nozzle neck thickness calculations non-circular vessel which is not there in division one it's there in uh in mandatory appendix but not there in main part but here it is very uh in detail it is covered so that we'll see jacketed vessels how to do the design okay that we'll talk about supports and attachments the stresses created because of that then saddle support that is not there in division one how we analyze the vessel due to saddle support that is basically if pv light if you run you will see that the reference is from division two okay so this is what it is following okay so we'll see about that also skirt support okay lug and leg support so all that we are going to see flanged joint okay so it's very similar to mandatory appendix to flange joint then design rules for shell and tube heat exchanger that is nothing but uhx okay which is very newly moved here in 23 edition so all this requirement is basically division one okay which was earlier in division one so the course intent is part four but it does not mean that we'll leave part five okay so part five also we are going to cover we'll leave only those parts which needs to be referred during FEA. Okay. So that part we leave, but we'll talk about the stress classification. We'll talk about stress categories and limits of equivalent stresses. Like, you know, we'll talk about all the load combination, which is done. So this will enable you to review a FEA report if somebody is submitting. So it will at least enable you to understand what exactly FEA guys are doing. So that also is part of this course. There will be six sessions on that design by analysis. Okay. Then fabrication requirement, forming, fitting, and uh, alignments, uh, weld joints. 
then we'll talk about inspection and examination like radiography acceptance standards you know that radiography has to be done based on uh, section 5 but the acceptance criteria is for division 2 part 4 will be here and it will be different it will be a little bit more stringent than division 1 okay so that also we are going to study and then pressure testing requirement hydrostatic test pressure calculation how we'll do the calculation okay what are the methods given in division 2 part 4 and then in the last we'll talk about over pressure protection so that is part 9 so more or less we are going to cover each part of division 2 it's a complete thing only left out will be the fea portion okay so and that is very limited and in fea portion also many things we are going to cover we are going to cover the stress classification which is very very difficult thing you know? and you know, the most difficult portion for any engineer to understand so that also we'll talk about okay okay so we have tried to cover everything which is uh, relevant which we use for design so nothing we are trying to leave okay and we'll try to go in depth whatever we do okay so it's going to be really really extensive okay? and only if you can put time okay towards it because you have to do lots of work okay so it's not one way traffic you know? it's not that only i have to put effort you have to also put effort so if you are ready to do that then only join okay don't join if you think that you won't be able to find time you have to take out time and it will be roughly three to four months it will go for four months because in one week we'll be giving only four hours of training and then there will be some uh you know, work so in a week you can consider with roughly five to six hours if you can take out for your improvement that is good enough okay and that will take you to the next level if you miss this you know if you try to learn this on your own it may take years okay believe me it may take years to learn this which we are going to learn in three to four months